Welcome to the show. Welcome to the demo drop. Are you all well? Are you all okay? Hmm? Hi, Twiddle. Hi, Sean. Hi, Twin Tornado. Hi, Quinny. For a Tuesday, I know, right? Well, it's been a long weekend, hasn't it? We had a, a thingy, bank holiday. Dangerously well. Hi, Richie. Yeah, I'll be in Edinburgh. Um, when was it? I can't remember now. Have a <laughs> Richie, stop it. Time to have a little listen. We're going to have a little listen to a few songs today. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so nice. Boba Shark. Go get yourself some bubble tea from Boba Shark. It's really nice. Mm. August. Okay, cool. Yep. August. I'll be in Edinburgh. Mm. Okay. Okay. Oh. I need to get my vape. I think I'm addicted to, to vaping. I've not vaped it all day. I've not thought about it. Um, but then as soon as I think about it, then I'm like, oh, I need my vape. So I'm, gonna try, I'm just going to try. I'm going to do my best not to have it. I did it last week. Do you remember last week I said I was going to have a can of Monster? And then I didn't. Because I was like, no, I already had two the other day. I'm going to see if I can go through the whole stream without vaping. Oh, God. 
We can do it. Yeah, I did, Sean. I, I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to smoke... Um, I used to smoke normal ciggies and then I moved on to roll-ups when it, when it all got really expensive. Yeah. I don't smoke Dorifa! <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't have anything against people smoking Dorifa, but I personally would not get anything done. And I would be the size of a house. Um, but yeah, I just vape now. I'm on three milligrams now. I used to be on 20 milligrams. I'm only on three milligrams. I know what it is. It's just, it's a security blanket for me. Um, it's just something to do with my hands. So, hi DJ Digi. We've got one of yours in today. Yeah, we have. Okay, we're going to get on with the show. Well, I'm glad you're all okay. I'm glad you've all had a nice extended weekend. Um, yeah. Welcome to the Demo Drop. If you are new to the Demo Drop, then don't worry. It's always like this. Um, it's basically, if you are a music maker, um, then you can um, send us your song and we'll play it. And then everyone will go, hey, I fucking nice that. Oh, fucking mint. Uh, and then we will follow you. Uh, if you need some advice, I can give you some advice. If you've got like a half-finished track and you don't know what to do with it, we can give you some ideas. Lots of people have started collabing. That's the international sign for collabing. Collabing with each other. Um, and people have got their work signed to labels. And yeah, it's just a nice place for everyone to get to know each other and could just confirm or, you know, like what they or or, or or help you to to recognize how good you are. Because sometimes it's difficult because if it's just you in a room you might just think everything's shit because we tend to do that. You know, if we think about how much we, we shit talk ourselves, then it makes sense that you'd do that with your own music as well. But so many times, like, people... I've been so surprised because people have talked themselves down. I'm like, just let me fucking hear what you've been doing. And then I'll listen to it, and I'm like, this is really good. And they're like, what, really? So, yeah. Hmm. Sean, are you in today, then? Let me have a quick look. Yeah, you're first. You're on first. Hang on a second. I'm not getting my vape. Hang on. I'm just moving my... um my alert screen from my monitor by the decks. Martin Guy, thank you so much for subscribing, mate. I really, really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, one arm army. Douche juice recommendations. What does that mean? Douche juice, what's that? What tie just let Matt? Oh, yeah. So these are these are like twenty years old. So we've got my kids saw these because I, I forget that they're about. My kids were like, Ugh Harder Faster. Have you seen the little faces that I drew on them as well? Look, he's really happy about it. And she's like, oh, for fuck's sake, not this again. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if they still still sell them. They might do.
Hello, um, Mr. Glover Bounce. How you doing? M. Glover, sorry. Mr. Glover, Glover. Okay. I'm going in now. First up, we have got Sean Mitchell. And this is Sunset Echoes. I've got to find everything first because I've started my stream without being completely ready again. There we go.
absolutely sure Mitchell Sunset Echoes. Um, I really like it. I like the the sounds that you've used. As everyone was saying in the chat, very uh, very classic trance. Um, I think maybe it might be slightly too long, like arrangement wise. It's we're at eight minutes. I think if you were going to pass this over to a label, they would probably say to condense this down a bit. And I think you could quite easily. Um, other things, I think the kick was just slightly too loud. I wanted to hear some of those leads a little bit louder. So kind of like the same loudness as you would have a vocal. So if you want a vocal to be like present, it's going to be one of the loudest um, elements in in the mix. Um, and I feel like that the kick probably could be pulled back a little bit. And then that will give you a bit more uh, scope then for just bringing out some of those lead sounds, especially the, da, 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 the one with the vibrato on it. That's it. Doctor You Tier Three Tier Three May, I love you so much. I really, really do. I I'm gonna sing you a song. That's how much I love you. Doctor You I love you, Doctor You Thank you, Doctor You Thank you, Dr. Do. Woo! Thank you for being a friend. Thank you, Dr. Do. It's, yeah, I'm going to put a donk on that. Thank you, mate. Tier 3. That's fucking mental. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you, Dr. Do. <laughs> Sean, really good effort. Do you know, you, you've got the main thing down. And the main thing that you've got down here is your sound selection. Hello, podders. Sound selection was perfect for this. Um, and I really liked it in that breakdown when that sound, when th this sound comes in. Yeah, I just I just feel like the, the, the kick can be brought back a little bit. In the mix, that's it. That's it. Really, really good tune. Thank you for sending it in, Sean. Keep them coming. Everyone, if you're not already following in Podders, please go and give him a follow, especially if you like trance. Because he plays a lot of trance. Uh, C. James, hello. Arctic Barbers, yeah, they're on tonight. Are you something to do with that, Podders, or do you just know them? Is this something to do with you? Hello, Carter. Who is... No, just good mates. They are T-A. What does that mean? What does that mean? Trans addicts. Ah, see, I thought so. Look at me knowing all the lingo. Yay. <laughs> oh, official carbs, is this you? You, DJ Biff and Carter, and that is... 
Arctic Barbers. That's so cool. I'm going to play your one next because um, cause I can. As we've been talking about it. Hello, Mark. How many? How many is there? There are many. I did not know how many barbers there were in the Arctic. But there seems to be a lot. And you're all so musical. It's amazing. Okay, so guys, this is totally awesome. Yeah, it could be. Maybe they're totally awesome and they're trans addicts. Peng <laughs> Penguins need haircuts too. I actually think that penguins are my favourite animal again. While we listen to this next track, I want you guys to tell me in the chat what your favourite animal is. Honestly, I do. You know, apart from like... The usual, like, let's say, uh, exotic animal, favourite exotic am animal. For me, it's got to be a penguin, definitely. Okay, so this is Lady Gaga, Remember is, remember Us This Way, Arctic, Arctic, what was I saying? Arctic, 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 Barber's Remix, Arctic. A honey Badger's a good one. Oh, we, yeah. Honey badger, sloths are great, yeah. The honey badger. Have you seen that? <laughs> Have you seen the, the 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 YouTube thing? I used to be known as the YouTube after party queen because I had so many cool, weird, random stuff from YouTube that I would show people at after parties. <sighs> he didn't give a fuck. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> Ew, what's that thing in his mouth? <laughs> so good. So good. Okay, so this is Lady Gaga, Remember Us This Way, Arctic Barbers remix. Here we go.
on that acid as well. Amazing. Really, really great idea. So that was the Arctic Barbers remix of Lady Gaga. Remember this away. I want you guys to know as well, this is a free download. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a free ta- download on SoundCloud. I'm giving you the link now. I'll be putting the link also in the description for when this goes onto YouTube as well. Um, so go and grab yourselves a copy of it. Um, yeah, and I, I recognized one of the effects that you'd put in here because I've used it as well from the Dave Parkinson Trans Essentials Pack 2, which is the tsh, that little sound. It's just here. Where is it? Near the beginning, you can hear that. There, that one. The ch- <laughs> yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a very um, it's a very like hard trancey kind of a sound in there. But yeah, yeah, I, I um, I, it's it's weird. Like after you've you've made music for so long, you can. You can hear, not in a bad way, not in a bad way. It's not like you like you can't really do anything with that sound to make it sound a lot different. Um, but um, yeah, I can I can usually tell someone's used like a, a loop from somewhere or a certain effect effects uh, from an effects pack of um, of a sample pack if I've got it, which is nice because it means that we're doing the right thing. Um, yeah, and yeah, thank you for sending sending it in because. I'm going to be playing this a lot. I love Lady Gaga. Um, and I just think that it worked so well. Because her, she's so energetic with the way that she talks, uh, she sings as well. Um, she's like my spirit animal in a lot of ways, I'd say. Along with penguins. Yeah, it's such a, a good tune. Such a good tune. Really well balanced. Nothing bad to say about it at all. Uh. Excuse me. Hello, Made For It Farm. Love you. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, go and follow Arctic Barbers immediately. Please. Thank you. Yeah, great tune. Great tune. Okay. Um, hang on. Okay. Okay. Um, what are we doing? Oh, my ADHD is getting me today. I'm, I was losing concentration. Um, DJ Digi next. Demos only or debut releases also okay. Yep, debut releases are fine as well. My main thing is to get you guys heard um, and to get you um, some exposure. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay, this is DJ Digi. I love this tune. Uh, And this is called Fantasy In Me. Sorry, it was a bit loud. Where are we?
There we go, DJ Digi and Fantasy in Me. Uh, I really, really like this. Very well produced. Great idea. Um, amazing vocal. Um, very obviously, Tears uh, Till Tears is due part. Um, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, but if this track did get really big, there's always that possibility that, you know, um, the label that own that track could have a problem with it. Um, you're probably fine, though, so please don't don't worry about that. But, you know, when, when we take such a big riff um, and put it in another track, sometimes that can, um, can um, cause issues, but that's not me having an issue with it that would be that's me just saying just be careful so if you if you really like that then you could always just change one note or two notes um to kind of make it your own but i really liked it i thought that it really worked um so mr uh, mr club mr glove glover m glover Brown says personally i'd put some of the bass notes down an octave and maybe dial in the sub bass a bit more yeah that might work um a lot of this is the thing with with bass in in bounce tunes it is a lot higher up than usual what would usually have have bass um in the range of bass in in other dance genres um but yeah that's always always good to check but yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought I thought with it being a kind of like a higher octave, it kind of gave it more energy as well. So yeah. But yeah, well done, mate. Well done. It's a great. It is a great tune. Um, and I like I said, I love that vocal. Love that vocal. It's really nice. But it, it works well with a well-known riff as well because it's kind of like mashup territory now which works very well on the bounce scene so i think any other genre i don't think you get away with it but i think you do get away with it because it's bounce so yeah well done mate next up we've got dj campbell uh rocket fuel but this is the jason naughty remix here we go.
was uh, amazing. DJ Campbell, Rocket Fuel, Jason Naughty remix. So many interesting switch ups in that. Yeah. Yeah, no worries, Digi. Have a nice time at work. Hi, Ricky. No worries, mate. Send them over when you're ready. Yeah, so a uh, shout out to Harrison J as well. Martin, good to see you. I really like this. I think they had um, some great moments in it. Um, and it takes time to be able to do that, to, to make a track interesting, go back in and, you know, get these little switch up sections. I love the little triplets area in there as well. Um, so, yeah, it was um, everything you want from like a, a, a hard dance track. Hello, Rachis. Yeah, I loved it. It's very Jason Naughty as well. It's very energetic, it's high energy. It's fun, which are all the things synonymous with Jason Naughty. So yeah, really liked it. Energetic. So that's me talking. There we go. Um, yeah, really liked it. And guys, make sure you are following. Hi, Seth. You are not late. No, you are. You, we haven't listened to your one yet. I was just checking. No, we've not. We've not listened to it, mate. Hi, hi. Welcome in. Yeah, thank you, Campbell. Make sure you do. Um, any of you like, if you want to like take clips of this show and stuff, please do because it's all good for the show because it gets more people watching. So feel free to do any of that. Um, yeah, thank you for sending it in, Campbell. Um, and next up, um, next up we'll do Seth's one because I've just seen Seth there in the chat. So, um, we'll put your one on now. So this is Seth who is Power Force One official in the chat. Good to meet you, mate. You're welcome, Campbell. Anytime. Anytime. So this is uh, Hannah Wants Cure My Desire. Amazing tune. Oh, what a vocal. What a vocal. And this is the Seth remix.
Hannah wants cue my desire Seth remix yeah I really liked um, the sounds in that very nicely put together um, Katie sorry those those redeems will not work on this show so I don't like any any noises on this show because we, we want to hear everyone's music but well, welcome in Katie I hope you're well hi Miss Dots yeah, um, I really liked it. Possibly with the mix down, I might have wanted like the kick to be a bit louder, but I don't know because oh, it kind of suited it like like this. But I, I know that if I played it with other tracks similar to this one, which did have a prominent kick, it wouldn't fit in a set. But what it would do is I, I would quite happily listen to this in an album or like on... on Spotify or whatever. So there's like, again, it, it's really good to ascertain, you know, what kind of feedback I'm giving here, which is kind of subjective, really, situational. Um, I've, yeah, I've given you the, the link to Seth's SoundCloud. There you go. And then from there, you should be able to find... Yeah, it's on the first page as soon as you go on there. Five followers right now, and I'm one of them. Can you please all go and follow Seth, please? Many thanks. I see you've got some um, other tracks on there as well. All still new to this, really? Wow. Well, you sound like you've been doing it for a long time. What, what, what door do you use, and what, what synths have you used for those sounds? I'd love to know. That's awesome. That really is awesome. And I think you work with Fatal Energy Recordings as well, which is a great label. Hi, Bosky. How are you doing? How are you? But yeah, I would love to know like what what door you're using, what 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 VSTs you're using. Cubase Five. I use Silent and Serum a lot. Wow. Wow. Serum, I can understand. Silent is very dated now, and they're not saying that people shouldn't use it, but. It's still nice to know people are using um, Silent. Um, but that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That really is. It's so cool. I might actually crack open Silent again. I've been so stuck on using... I'm on Vital and Avenger all the time now. <laughs> but it really depends what, what kind of music you're making, you know? What should I replace silent with? Nothing, babe. Nothing at all. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just very dated now. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot more synths out there that can produce better sounding um, sounds because of uh, the way that the effects chains work. The onboard effects for silent aren't necessarily the best. 
Um, so there's nothing really against silence because silence is amazing. Well, it was for its time, but it's not been updated for a very, very long time. Um, but yeah, it de- it all depends what what style you're going for. Um, but silence is is great because it's a really great subtractive synth that helps you to understand um, basic synthesis before you know moving on to more advanced things. Hive, yeah, I never used Hive. I've heard of it though. Good for layering sounds. Yep, yep. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it depends on what it is you, you're wanting to achieve. Um, Diva's another great one. Amazing sounds from that. Um, but yeah, I really, I'm really loving Avenger and I'm loving Vital. We talk about Vital quite a lot on here. If you're not, if you haven't got Vital yet, go and get it because it's free. Free. Rave Generator 2. Have you tried what Rave Generator 3? I've got that now. Presonus. Presonus. I've heard of that. Is that the make? Not the synth. Presonus. Ah. What am I looking at here? Presonus. Studio One. Yeah. Yeah, the door. Studio One. I've heard of Studio One. I've never used it. So I'm going to look at it now. See, it doesn't matter what you use at the end of the day. It's how you use it. There you go. I I don't think I'd ever get rid of Silent, though, because I have so... So many presets for it. So many sound banks and presets. And I bet everyone's got the Omet Ozcan sound bank. Everyone's got that. Yeah, it's like I I will never get rid of it. <laughs> everyone's got the Omet Ozcan sound bank. You must do. If you don't then I feel sorry for you. Yeah, if you know, you know. You have a what? Really? I thought everyone had it. I thought it was like using Vengeance Club Sounds 3 or whatever, loop packs. Like, everyone has them. Oh, my God. Oh, is that with them, Fat Man? Yeah. I... <laughs> <sighs> I don't know what you guys like. Maybe maybe I've just got far too many VSTs and presets and sound banks and stuff. Yeah, I thought everyone had that. Huh. How do you spell that sound bank? Okay. Oh, fucking hell. Um, omit. Omit. As can. Silence. Preset sound bank. Let me just find it for you. Omet Ozcan, not Omet. What's wrong with Harmer? Nothing. Ah, oh, Harmer's amazing. I spent so many happy hours, days, weeks using uh, Harmer. Harmer's got some great, like, unison sounds in it. Well, it's got the unison that it's got in it that creates the sound is really cool. And it also has a great, um, you can add images into into Harmer. How much is it? Um, I don't know. (laughs) Didn't pay for it. Uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Go and have a look. Go and have a look. But yeah, it's um, it's Umit. Umit. Ozcan. There you go. Look for that. 
He's also done a really cool synth called Genesis. But I don't know if he did one that was 64 bit. Because the one that I, I bought it for a euro years ago when it came out. And then it was pending a 64 bit version being made. But I don't think it was. That's brilliant, Naughty Noodles. That's awesome. Yeah, anything that you can do to be creative is great. Be creative. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Fat Man's down downloading Vital. Great. Yeah, Harmer, Harmer's amazing. I love Harmer. I like the compressors on there as well. It's got one that's called... Oh, I've not used it for years, but I used it a lot years ago. Uh, one called Rubber, which I really liked. Um, and one called Rubber Cap, I think. Something like that, or Cap. I, it's, 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 yeah, you just have to go and use it and just mess around. Mess around for hours and hours and hours and hours. And it, it's, it's great. I love it. Love it. So, yeah, harm is great. But again, it is still dated in terms of like what you want to, if you want to get a sound that's got like movement and texture and stuff happening, then choose one that's got wavetable synthesis um, in there. So you can use a wavetable in an oscillator because that way, and also one that you can assign macros to and from things um, you know, for expression and things like that. You want a synth that can give you those things. But there's like, uh, if someone said earlier, you know, using, um, use, using a silent or whatever as a layer, fine. Or just to get something quickly down, like fine, just don't worry about it. Do you use any hardware since what well, me? Yeah, I've got um I've got a mini moog. Mini moog. Again a mini moog and I've got um I've got the Virus TI Snow which I use actually when I DJ, not really when I'm in the studio because I have an emulator for for that. Um, so yeah, I, do you know what though? I'm getting really scared now because I'm just worried if something happens to it because it's discontinued now. So I have to think about like the, the, the microchip, there's a, there's a, a certain microchip that you need to get it to work, to keep it working. Um, so, uh, yeah, the DSP fifty six hundred is is the that is the Osiris, which is the normal virus, but it's not the the TI Snow. But there is now an emulator for the TI Snow, and it's it's okay now. It's not glitchy, and it doesn't max out your CPU. So, oh, do they control for? Okay, cool. D D oh oh, I see. Oh, that's where the name comes from. I understand now. Okay, so so for those of you that don't understand what's going on here, uh, I'm barely hanging on. DSP fifty six. Okay, so that's by Motorola. That's the chip that they use then in the in the synths. Great. Thank you for telling me. So that makes sense as to why the virus emulator, the software version, is called the DSP fifty six hundred. Then, brilliant. It was originally designed for military industrial complex for sonar, submarines, etc. What? Miss Dart says, no clue. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is what happens when you live with a musical genius for 11 years. I had no interest, very little interest in, in getting this fucking deep into music production. But I wanted him to kiss me. I wanted him to kiss me so much. I was like, oh, can you just come in my studio again so you can tell me all about subtractive synthesis? Mm. <laughs> ah! And then I got into it. Then I got into it. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. This is just taking over my life now. <sighs> what does the chip do? Yeah, what does the chip do? 
What does it do if it was designed for military and see if if I still had my the government oh, I still do a little bit, but my like everyone's out to get us, so I'd be like, shit, I need to get rid of that chip. <laughs> I'm going to go and bury my virus T.I. Snow in the garden two metres down. <laughs> Watching me. <laughs> you know, they're at it again. Oh. Bosky says, I have an emulator for the old school JP8. Cool. Yeah, there's, there's loads of ways now that you can get exactly, and I'm saying that in those things. Hyphenated? What's those things? Inverted commas. Like people who are complete like audiophiles might tell you that there is a difference between a hardware version and a software version. I personally don't know that much about it, whether there is or there isn't. What I do know is it sounds very, very, very close. I have an evil cleanse, man. I haven't signed the Official Secrets Act. Nope. It's a one-to-one -one clone. There you go. There you go. It makes sense to me because it's... It's all computers, isn't it? But we just, we just don't need hardware to create those, those sounds anymore. Kind of like the same as... Um, game emulation software now. Yeah, so I, I agree with that, Sean. Sure. I think that you can get a warmer sound by using hardware. Um, um, emulation mixing console. Yeah, um, I agree with that. To but I don't know, if I'm really honest, I don't know if that's just me picking up on what other people have said or my own bias because I like hardware and I like vinyl, for example. So it's, it's a difficult one. I don't think it is um, anything that we need to worry about. If you've got the money and, it, and, and or if you really, really, really love that side of it, get yourself some hardware. But yeah, um, it's it's really not needed. You can you can get stuff really really cheap. Like we're going back to Vital now. We can get Vital um, for for free. So yeah, I I actually do enjoy having some hardware elements when I'm doing my DJ set because I get kind of bored when I'm just mixing on CDJs. It's not so much when I'm mixing on vinyl, but having having the TD3 there. And the uh, virus TI snow, it, it gives me something to do with my hands. Um, and it, it's creating new stuff as well. The next thing will be a drum machine. Definitely. Definitely. Next, we've got digital industries and infectious. But yeah, going back to you, Seth, I just want to say I really, really do like that. Um, and I'm so, so proud of you, especially if you've not been doing this for a very, very long time. It sounded epic. Okay, next up, Digital Industries, my friend Danny, and this is Infectious.
Yay! Danny Digital Industries take a bow. I really, really like that one. Um, so he's put a rework of a track I did four years back. This is kind of a deep vocal house with elements of slap house. I like that name. Slap house. Awesome. Yeah, really good track. Really good track. Um, I love the vocal. I really love the vocal. The, the The rest of it was quite poppy for me. Uh, excuse me. Which I know no one's asked for my opinion. <laughs> Karen. But it, you can just tell it's a well-produced tune. So, yeah. it's and I could hear something like this on the radio. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that that vocal is great. So yeah, thank you, Danny. Isn't this show just as asking for your opinion? I don't know, is it? <laughs> oh my god, this is the Karen show. Welcome to the Karen drop. Yeah, that would, you know, I would, I would really love to do this one day. Um, I would really love to get really drunk. Am I allowed to get drunk mods on that, on, on my stream? I know I have been, but I mean like specifically to get drunk and then roast everyone's music. Like, you know, just like is a, is a one off. You know, do what you like, says Rich. Yeah, but what does what does TOS say? You know, like yeah, and get like Dave to come round, General Bounds, because it is so opposite of what I am. But I, I'm telling you now, right? When I'm in private with with especially with Dave, Dave's great because like Dave will come round and he will just slag off everyone and I'm like oh my god you can't say that oh my god it's so bad and then he gets me doing it and then I always feel better afterwards it's no one nice I would never slag off anyone nice but like just people who would who were yeah people there yeah, we do need more more of day that's how we became friends because he's kind of like not scared to say how it is and in this business you have to be really careful what you say and how you say it all the time I and mean, I wouldn't go out there to, to be like intentionally horrible to anyone but sometimes there are things that that do um annoy me and frustrate me and you know sometimes um sometimes I, I like to, to to say that especially when I'm standing up for other people you know that that's that's how I feel in a, in a in a kind of sincere way but regarding this this show I just think it'd be really funny <laughs> it'd be really funny just to do like one where like everyone knows I'm going to roast it and just say awful things. <laughs> and just get re really drunk. The thing is, though, if I get really drunk, I'll probably end up like just crying and telling everyone how much I love them. But I'll I'll make sure that Dave keeps me on track. But yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll just have a show where we, ju where we just criticise. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I I don't mind people taking the piss. I really don't. But it, it we'll have to do it in a in a way that people know that that's like not what normally happens. <laughs> okay, next one is we've got. Oh, cool. We've got third wav. Another mate of mine here. Uh, this is third wav, and this is I feel wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
The first moment before the first touch We know the longing we have to hold each other I will drown in your love My suffocate your needs Now we're healed We have our own language My fingertips when the wind screams my name Take his hands and be free To run, run, run to Was that third wave? Yep. Awesome, awesome producer. He's been signed exclusively to a big European label now as well. Um, yeah, thank you very much, mate, for sending that in. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I can only listen to a bit of Gabba and and that kind of style. What's it called? Uptempo. Is it? Uptempo? But I love that juxtaposition between like the 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 female floaty vocals of trance and then like the full onness of that hard style gabba um distorted kick drum stuff. Yeah, it's it's just great. It works so well. And it it wasn't it wasn't doing it for too long either. It wasn't like it was full throughout the whole track. Like the majority of it was that kind of like that side trancey, um, rolling baseline kind of stuff. So I could cope with that quite well. And then, and then yeah, and then it just had those little switch ups, and those switch ups were just long enough. 
without it becoming like fatiguing on the ear as well. So that's a really good example of a, a of a track in this style that was done, you know, very well. It is very trendy, yeah. It's yeah, I guess it's not unique, it's very trendy. But it works. It works. It was like a platter of different foods from different countries. I love that analogy. I love that. Yeah, do you know, every time I hear I think I no, I think I actually did manage to remember to do it once because whenever I hear stuff like this, I'm always like, Oh, in my next track I'm gonna do like a switch up with the kick and put a different kick in. I did actually do that on that, she's not a Christian. So there are parts on that where I did swap out the kick um, and the rumble for, oh no, I didn't, I added, I added in a, I added in a gated kick that I'd reversed and had it doing the job of like a, a subby, um, reverse bass bit but it was only for like 16 bars and that was taken from tracks like this that idea was taken from tracks like this um with these switch ups because it can it, it can be a really good way of injecting um energy transitioning from one um part of a track to another it works really well yeah and i know but i like the way that this was made it was it was very well balanced in that regard. So yeah, thank you for sending it in third wave. Next. Next is Crescendo. Are you out there? This is Stack Rack versus S and M bootleg. Um anyone else playing pal world yeah i'm on level 49 now just to let you all know i cracked level 49 last night so i can now make a rocket launcher and rocket ammo it's just letting you know i know no one cares probably only me playing this game now but i really like it so, so fuck you Fuck you. Where are we? Crescendo, are you out there? Let the heavens
Crescendo, are you out there? Stack Rock and s and Bootleg. I really like this. I like um, I like Psytrance. And someone mentioned something that I was picking up on, which I really liked as well. The the kind of like the roll gate on the kick. Yeah, so velocity. Hello, Kelly. Velocity, very, very important in, um, in Psytrance simplicity making a lot out of uh not a lot there you go making mountains out of molehills good mindset for side trance apparently um i don't know if that's true i i, I know what i mean by that but yeah, what I mean, okay, in different ways. So you can't really hide behind anything when it comes to side trance. The the sounds are every sound is there for a reason. Yes. See, you've just said it so much better. Side trance tracks are known for their intricate layers of sound. 
which often include a mix of synthesized sounds, samples and effects. These layers create a rich, immersive auditory experience. So true. And I love how you've said that. Yeah, loads of delay and reverb, all about taking an initial sound and doing weird stuff to it. I also like... Um, Oh, my brain's not working. It's because I've had sugar today. I've had my I've had my sugar hype now. Um, granular, granular effects on um, side trance are really cool as well. So, why does that look like it was written by air? I was gonna say, but I didn't want to be rude. Was it control for? We were like, okay, oh yeah, it was so clever. Like, it was so wise. So wise. It did look a little bit like that. Y yes. Ah! I need to start doing that now. But I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to like, in, in, while the track's playing, I'm just going to get like AI just to like listen in and say stuff. Make, make me look really like I know what I'm talking about then. Brilliant. Who needs a university thingy, whatever it was, and who needs experience when you can just use AI? Yeah. Brilliant. Get AI to generate vocals for your next track. I've tried. It, it, it just becomes comedy until, until it gets better. When it gets better, I definitely use it. And there are, there are some really good... AI synth, there's, what's it called, synth, it might be just be called AI synth, um, and I did actually, I, I did reuse a vocal and, and made like a female vocal for the I am a Twitch streamer, synth, yeah, synth plants, synth, synth plants a bit different, from what I understand, synth plant, synth plant is really cool though, I will actually want to get into using synth, synth, synth plant. Um, yeah, I'm not on about Synplan. I'm on about um, Synth AI. No, I'm not. If Danny was here, Digital Industries, he'll know. I, I have got it, but I can't remember. There's so many of them. There's so many of them now. Yeah, yeah, it is difficult to get your head around. If you give it a bit of time, though, it's it, it will sound really good. But I think there's like the paid versions as well. Probably a little bit like Melodyne. But, you know, he's had some very good results with it. He he's, he put a, 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 a track in the demo drop about over a year ago now. And it was all, it was an AI done by, it was a vocal done by AI and it just sounded awesome. Sounded amazing. Amber, check this out. Mario Nito Harmony Bloom. What? What is it? Ooh. MIDI generator. Should we have a quick look at it? Let me share the screen with you. I'm just going to do it this way because it's just easier for me. Look at this is what I see when uh, when I'm talking to you a lot. This is my notes. It's everyone's Google Docs there. There we go. There we go. That's me. Woo! Hi. That's that's how that's how this is where the magic happens. Okay, so Harmony Bloom demo cut. Cuts this up. This looks pretty cool. Music 
music and maths. Maths and music. Let's have a quick look at the comments. Look, you know it's good because someone's put, bought yesterday, playing with this today. I am totally flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. Where's it gone? Where's your word gone? Flabbergasted. I wish I was flabbergasted. I, I, I'm not flabbergasted. It's not fair. Yeah. I think we should get this. This is so cool. There we go. I'll, fla I'll flabber your ghast. Little lady. Yeah, it, that looks... That looks so cool. Music and maths and maths and music. Music and maths and maths and music is good. Music and maths and maths and music. I want to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Music and maths and maths and music. <laughs> Little lady. Do it. I want you to always call me little little lady. <laughs> little hey there, little lady. I use an AI MIDI generator called Melody Source too for inspiration. If I'm stuck, I saw a hip hop producer raving about it and it's ridiculously good. Can be a bit of a pain because it's similar to the M1 where it won't stick to a setting you've picked if you change the melody. Yeah, yeah. That is a thing with the M1. Um, cool. What was it called again? AI MIDI generator. I can't find it. I've just put in, oh, Melody Source, sorry, Melody Source, Melody Source. This looks pretty cool as well. Let's have a quick look at this. Look. So you've got key, octave, triplet swing, legato, blah, 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 blah. Um, Melody Banks. Is this the one that you're on about? Have you ever came to a place where you were creating and you got stuck and you was... Uh, hang on. Yeah. Duh. It's like, yo, I need a major idea. <laughs> yo. I got a solution for you. Melody. I got a solution for you. I'm going to tell you right now what it is. Let's go. Sauce 2. This is dope, man. I like it, man. Melodies with ease. Thanks, Christ. That's got some serious swagger to it. I am digging that. One of the digging nicest, I'll that. say, AI generated that I approve of. You mean to tell me that a robot AI technology is doing this? This plugin should be illegal for how good it is. It is so good, it should be banned from the community. Still not impressed yet? Oh wait, there is more. There's, There's millions more. and millions of melodies inside of this. It can literally make millions and millions of melodies for you. If you've been struggling with coming up with melody ideas, look no further, this right here is what you need. I mean, come on, that's automatically inspired right there. Like, seriously, like- I is, it, is that what AI stands for? Automatically inspiring? <laughs> I can do a lot with that right there. It's affordable and it's a dope plug. It's real good for when you have beat block or when you have to be highly productive. Bruh, at this point, I don't even care what you think because I'm going to use this a whole bunch. Grab this, grab this right now. Oh, this plugin is fire. Fire! <laughs> this plugin is fire, god damn it. You got to get it. <laughs> Anal injury, yeah. It's cheating. Okay, so let's have a quick discussion about why you think it's cheating, Bosky. What what's cheating about um what was it doing? 
So what it's doing is it's helping you with melodies and it's helping you with MIDI patterns. So what what do you find that's cheating about it? I've never been stuck when making music before. I've also never made music before. <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it, where people's boundaries are on what is cheating and what isn't. I think anything where you are being being productive and, you know, putting something of your of your yeah yeah like I I I personally don't think that that is cheating because I am like, I'm classically trained. I spent many 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 years of my life learning how to play the piano but when it comes so okay so let's see what Bosque said first a melody should be something felt and written independently using AI is soulless and has no input from a writer whatsoever unless it's further edited okay okay I I I th I don't agree because it will be further edited. If you haven't further edited it and you use one of these things, it will be, it kind of would be obvious, wouldn't it? Or if it is, even if it wasn't obvious, as an artist, you would eventually get bored. You would, you would eventually get bored and you would want to learn how to do it yourself anyway. Um, a melody should be something felt and written independently. Yeah, but what if you, um, what if you're, what if you've got a, uh, it's not your strong point. What if you're a singer and your strong point is singing and you want to put down the rest of the track, but you just want to, you just want it to be in a certain key. So all it's doing is it's just knocking out a syncopated pattern. That's all it's doing. So I'll give you a good example. A lot of the time I get in my head when I'm writing a, a, a new MIDI pattern, right? Uh, when I'm doing a new, a new riff and I get stuck in my head because it's always 16th notes or it's um, and I get so stuck in my head, right? That I, have, I would either have to step away from the whole project for at least a few days and then come back and try and start a new one because I will always be starting from the reference point of what my last MIDI pattern was in that. And so, and if you say that that's cheating, then we're going to have to say that using a preset in a synth is now cheating as well. If that is how, I mean... If if you feel that that's cheating, then presets are cheating. Surely, with AI you have no say. No, you do. Yeah, all it's do when it says AI, it's not like the AI is. Do did you see the thing? It's not like you can't not amend it and change it. What it's doing? <laughs> see, DJ, ah! Can everyone just stop getting shot? It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting where everyone's, where everyone's feeling. Because I have my my point as well, my breaking point with this, which is if you use AI to make the fucking track for you, I'm like, no, no thanks. Um, like I, so I, I do understand it, but I think it's it's okay to get inspiration because i i've done it before i i use like with avenger i'll put on the arpeggiator does this mean arpeggiators are cheating it's not like the whole ghost production producer arm it's just a plug-in it's not it, you can't you can't put that in the same bracket as a ghost produ ghost production because you're still doing the stuff in it aren't you <laughs> it's only cheating if you get caught yeah, but you're cheating yourself, aren't you? Have you used the random melody melody generator in the piano roll? Oh, you mean for FL Studio? Yeah, yeah, that's um, the the riff generator. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't use it, but um, I'm now that you mentioned it, I'm probably gonna um have another go at it. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, thank you, Miss Dots. That's a really good way of putting it. It's it's a tool 
to aid creativity. Um, but yeah, I, I use the arpeggiator in in Avenger, for example. And then when I find one, and I'll do this, I'll make a chord, I'll get the melody, like I'll get the chord progression, and then I'll put on an, an arpeggiator, and that arpeggiator will, I'll, I'll flick through them randomly, and I'll find one that just fits with the groove of the track, um, and I'll be like, oh, I really like how that sounds. And then I'll do that thing called burn to MIDI. Burn to MIDI will then allow me to have that arpeggiator outside of the synth and have it in a MIDI pattern in the piano roll. And then there, if I feel like it, I can change it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll leave it as it is. I do not see that as cheating. I see that as um, understanding how to use my synth on a deep level. Because because you will get stuck. You will end up getting stuck. You'll only have because there's only a finite amount of patterns that will work in a certain in in genres of dance music, and there's only a certain number of uh, chord progressions, bass progressions that will work around that. So <laughs> it's all just noise at the end of the day, yeah. But it's interesting to me, Bosky, how how um, how strict you are about that being um something that is cheating and I would really I mean I'm never going to tell you to change your mind or anything like that but I just feel that that limitation might um hinder your um your inspirational capabilities you know because I do, I, I don't think that that's that's a bad thing to to be using something like that. And I I would I would be quick to say if I thought something was cheating. But I honestly I went through this in, in my in my career, in my journey as as a music person. I remember I used to think that presets were cheating, right? Um, I love using presets now, but I made my life hell for years learning how to make everything from scratch, everything. And I learned so much about synthesis. No one cares. <laughs> this is this is this is a fucking true thing. No one cares. No one cares. Um do you know what it did allow me to do though? It taught me a lot about um synths and synthesis. It taught me a lot about my favorite synths. Um, so I can now control the sound and get it to, to what I want it to sound like, layering, trying them, trying out different ones. That that understanding was definitely worth delving into. But I would never want someone to go through that amount of mental torture that I put myself through. It was horrible. I still have um, a, I, I had some porridge in my hand, right? And I was so frustrated the one day I just threw it at the wall. I threw it at the wall because I, I couldn't make make a certain sound. Um, that and that was like, the, I, I will remember that day forever because it was like, wow, uh, you are not having fun. Because if you're not having fun with music production, at, at some point, and this is the right thing to do, is to just fucking stop doing it. Because if you're not having fun with it, what is the point? What is the point? I'm just going to read through these messages now. Casual listeners have no idea that you've used Dave Parkinson's lead number 52. Yet, yeah. It helped me mess with the presets to make them not sound like presets. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just amending stuff. I'm sorry to repeat this, but this is a good point. There are two different values in art, the producer and the receiver. These two doesn't have to be a one-to-one. -one. The value of the producer shouldn't be related to how many people like it, but the value it gives you to make the art. And for the receiver, the value is what the art does to you, what feelings it triggers inside you. I love that. Yeah. ENG music, you said it best there. Yeah, I agree because everyone has their own. Uh, that's art for you. Art can make you feel a certain way. You can translate lyrics 
to mean whatever it is that you want and and you know that goes for all kinds of art as well that's why i left music production a decade ago yeah and i can understand why because it's fucking hard it's the hardest thing i've ever done ever including being a parent being a parent is a piece of piss um compared to music production it was not easy for me at all like i said though when i first mentioned it's there for when i'm stuck need inspiration yep i agree i agree it's a tool it's a tool Yeah, everyone everyone has their own opinion, exactly, Bosky. If you don't want to use it, then don't go against your principles at all. Um I I understand that, mate. But I would hang fire on being um attitude -y about other people using it. No worries, Sean, I'll see you soon. See, James, I only started to try and make music to try and impress you. <laughs> Me and you both, mate. That's what I did to Guy as well. Well, mate, listen, you can always start making more music and I would love to hear some more music from you. If that's it, but you need to know what your intentions are. Like, you, you have to have the right intentions for it. You know, if, if it's something that you want to do, then that's cool. But, do you know, I, I love the fact that you are very, very knowledgeable in your hard trance, you know, in a lot of other genres of music, um, like the trance stuff as well. You know, you know, a lot about it. So it probably would be good for you to get back into it. But do it for you. I never gave anyone attitude about using it. I know you wouldn't. Yes, I know that you wouldn't, sweetheart. I'm just warning you just not to not to do that because it, it gets people upset, doesn't it? But I think that's great. If you don't want to use it, then then that's great. I don't think you need to. I think riffs are probably a strong a strong area for you. So don't worry about it. But yeah. Yeah, stop it, Bosky. If you know, you know. Oh, hi, Lois Lane. How are you doing? Yeah, good talk, everyone. And I will be sure to check uh, check out Melody Source and um, Harmony Bloom. So yeah, they you know they also look good for doing like live jamming stuff as well. So it depends what kind of producer you are. If you're a producer like you know like Beardy Man, that kind of thing then you can use these kind of plugins to manipulate sound on the fly, as they say, using a MIDI controller. Um, I think that that's a really good way of using it and it can make stuff sound really interesting. We did, we just had a mass debate. Stop it. Okay. So, but yeah, I really, really like that uh, that last track that we, this is the problem is we just heard a really cool side trance tune and it just got us talking about music production on a much deeper level. But that's a sign of a good track there. So th thank you to Sam Martin for sending that one in. Next up, Mr. Michael Glover himself in the chat. This is called Big Peg, My Remedy.
catch myself trying to overthink Someone better pass me another drink I can't think of I really like this big peg my remedy yeah really really nice well balanced i love the vocal i'd love to know where that vocal's from yeah i think this could be taken a, a lot of a lot of good ways in terms of remixing as well yeah really really nice um it, it's something that you could play in a in a set and you could also just listen to it in the car um yeah 91 vocals is the brand cool i'll have to look out for that maybe i've let me have a quick look on my pc usually what i do now for for vocals is loop cloud or i will literally just type in acapellas on my computer and just see what comes up okay i've got 91 v dusty acapellas lo-fi uh, r&b vocals maybe maybe that's it oh that's from spli so yeah that's probably a a newer thing but yeah i d hi jay can how you doing I'm glad I'm I'm glad that you got yourself a decent vocal there. Good vocals can be very difficult to find. So, yeah, I I really like this. Really really like this. Yeah, I I'd like to hear Yeah, like mixing but as long as, as long as you've got something that is good quality to begin with, then you'll be fine. Out now on Manic Music. Brilliant. Uh, make sure you go and follow Big Peg uh, over on Facebook. I, I can't share the link of this track because it's private, but 
go and show some love. Yay. Big Peg, there you are. Manic Music, brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for sending it in. And please, please make sure you send in something else as well. Loved it. Great work. It's actually two people. There you go. Well, well, pegging usually needs two people, apparently. What you two do for inspiration is up to you guys. That's fine. Whatever. Like, if you don't want to fork out for an AI plugin, <laughs> do it the old-fashioned way. Give him a good pegging. There you go. Oh, Busky's got it. Yay. There you go. Then you can go and do a remix now. Let's see if I've got it. I'll have a look on Splice later. Um, For something similar. But yeah, that's brilliant. Put a peg on it. Definitely. Next up, we've got Nick Hughes' Let the Bass Drum Go.
we go. That was Nick Hughes that was letting the bass drum go. Awesome. Yeah, I really liked that one. So make sure you go and follow Nick Hughes over on SoundCloud. Yeah, I, I liked hearing that vocal without it being pitched up because I always use, usually hear it pitched up in a bounce tune. And it wasn't this time. Yay. So it's nice. Something like that I know, that I'm, I recognize, but done in a slightly different way. So, yeah. Yay. Yeah, that's a brilliant... It hasn't been at it that long either. Yeah, well, there's, there is a lot of new young talent. Not even necessarily young either, but people are getting into it more. And I love it. I love it. Yeah, it is. It is. It is the best way to approach stuff that's been hammered. Because a good idea is a good idea. I've heard there's an old sample from a, from Shock Records, which I think's on Hannah Lane's album or uh, her, her, Hannah Lane's record label or one of her latest tunes. Uh, I can't remember which one it was, but it's like an old vocal rap hook that you re you'll remember. But they were great back then, and it's that's the thing now is it's been long enough that these ideas are coming back in again, which is great. I love it. Um, but we, some of us, always loved those things. We didn't just go, oh, it's not popular anymore, so we're not going to play it. Some of us have always loved that kind of style, so it's so nice to see like the younger lot, gen, the younger generation now, like embracing the nineties. Early, early mid and early two thousand, uh, mid nineties, early two thousands, um, house, hard house, rave stuff. Yeah, it's great. Even more so because we've got all the samples for that shit. <laughs> and I, I'm glad I didn't get rid of any of the crap stuff either. Well, what I thought was crap because, like, what I mean by crap is not crap, but just overused stuff. Like, in the beginning, Jack created a groove. And with this groove, he made it move. And then he reached out, he sang a song. And he sang a song, happiness. Like, I heard that so many times. Every time I go into a new acapella thingy that I've downloaded, I'm like, there it is again. And I've never used it in a, tra in a track. But then I heard it recently, someone else used it in a track. I was like, oh, I wish I'd have done that. <laughs> But I wouldn't do it because I've just heard it so many times, which is stupid. It's stupid. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with reusing these other stuff because the younger lot are going to use them anyway because it's the first time they've heard them. So why not? Whoop, there it is. Exactly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for an awesome, awesome stream. And I really love speaking to you a lot and, and finding out what you think about stuff. So thank you. I am going to send you all um, Wait there. Wait there. Let's take you over to Insanity DJ. I know that song. That's a um that's a Rob Yellowly random but raw track, that one. I think. I recognise it. Yeah. Wait there. Stay where you are. I'm raiding you over now. I will see you in a few days' time with new hair. Well, I'm getting my roots done. Yeah, thank you, Cobbs. Thank you, everyone. You've been awesome. 
I really appreciate you guys um, sticking around for after your tunes have been played as well and giving advice, telling me what you think about stuff, giving me your opinion on things. It's so important. Control 4, thank you. Thank you so much, mate. Love you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it's great. It's it's like having everyone around mine for for drinks, but without having to pick up any mess. And, you know, I can just go and play on my computer games now when everyone's pissed me off enough or annoyed me. Oh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I can just turn off the computer. <laughs> it's great. I'm sure you lot feel the same as well. I've had enough of her now. Bye. In a bit, dickhead. Well, I'll speak to you all on Thursday. Love you. Bye.